Good afternoon, fellow Rotarians. Welcome to the Rotary Club of Gainesville meeting at the Cade Museum. If you're watching on YouTube, please register your participation by sending an email to info at rotarygainesville.org. And as a reminder, please remember to silence your cell phone. Now, bringing Pete Inwall back to the podium for our song and pledge. My, uh, my wife made me a cake over the weekend, and it had on the face of it was a clock, you know. Oh, he can't hear me. Okay, well, gee, let me remedy that. Uh, anyway, so I ate most of the whole thing. Uh, it, was, it was very time-consuming, especially when I went back for seconds. Oh, okay. Okay. We're going to sing My Country, Tis of Thee today. My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from every mountainside, let freedom ring. You join me in pledging allegiance to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Pete. And now for our invocation, Lori Vidal. Let us pray together. We have come together today consistently as a club to make an impact in our community. It makes a difference in people's lives, and we have made a difference in many ways. And it is a joy uh, to be able to observe others in our community that have made a difference in many people's lives through the calling they have followed consistently, striving for excellence and achieving at a high level. We thank you, Father, for the opportunity we have had for literally decades, watching the establishment of a legacy in college women's volleyball here in Gainesville. Help us now, today, to simply drink in an example of excellence in life that can challenge us individually and as a club to be more of what you desire us to be. We ask you today to use us as encouragers to Mary as she speaks to support someone who, we tru who truly does live life the right way. And I pray in your most excellent name, amen. Thank you, Lori. You may be seated. I ask that guests and visiting Rotarians remain standing to be introduced. Good afternoon, everyone. Tom Collette here. Please welcome my guest today, the managing partner at Spurrier's Gridiron Grill, as well as an incredible marketer, Freddie Wiebe. Hello, Rotarians. I'm Anne Marie Rogers, and I have as my guest today, Chanda Stebbins, who used to be the women's basketball coach at Santa Fe, is now the athletic director at Santa Fe. I'm Susan Crowley and I'm very proud to have today my grandson Cole from Jacksonville where he's in fifth grade and a safety patrol. Um, he will also, I hope one of these days, be a fourth generation Rotarian. So I, he's also a great athlete and I'm really pleased to have him be able to hear Mary today. Hello, fellow Rotarians. I have the great honor of introducing Ann Polo. I want everybody to meet her. She is taking on our, the role of our executive secretary. So she's going to be a part of our group moving forward. Thank you. 
Thank you, welcome everyone. We're happy to have you with us. And now we have a few quick announcements before we get started with an exciting program. First off, Elena Frazier. Good afternoon, go Gators. Um, I'm so excited that Coach Weiss is here, but I can fangirl later because I wanted to talk to you today about our annual Rotary International Auction. It's gonna be on December the 5th, and the recipient is gonna be Sustainable Cambodia. For those of you that are new to the club, um, you know, we started Sustainable Cambodia with, this club started it, members from this club started it. We had one school with 60 students in it, Today, we have thousands of students, over 20 campuses, and we have community development programs with clean water, food security, and we partnered with more than 100 Rotary Clubs worldwide. All of that started right here in this club, which is so amazing. So, our annual auction, tons of fun. We have a great time putting it together for you, but we need something from you right now, and that's committee members, We've got a few in the audience. I saw Sarah's here, Marie's over here, Richard, and a few others. But we did have some folks retire this year, so we need some new members to bring in some new blood to help us with this project. And we can't do it without you. So we're gonna meet for just a couple of minutes after Rotary. If anybody has any questions about Sustainable Cambodia, has any questions about the auction, so we can persuade you to become part of the fold here. Anyway, um, thank you so much. Thank you for your support, and go Gators. Thank you, Elena. That auction will be here before you know it. And next, Deborah Newell for an announcement. Good afternoon, fellow Rotarians. I am delighted, hi Sam, um, to let you know that we have given birth. Um, our two students, uh, one from the Netherlands and one from Austria arrived uh, Thursday and Friday evening this past week. Um, and uh, myself and Guy and um, let's see, Charles Allen and the host parents, Sam came out Friday evening um, to meet Jackie Lee. And so that's more fruit of all of our labor and everybody's effort and support of the Rotary Youth Exchange. And you will be seeing uh, them come to visit and they will be giving a presentation at some point in time as, as schedule allows. And we will be bringing them with us to the um, events, fun and fellowship and preparation for Seafood Spectacular and, and all those types of things. So make an effort to get to know them. If you and your family are doing something special that you think someone, uh, a young person from another country would enjoy, please um, reach out and we'll get you in touch with them and uh, let's show them a good Gainesville and Florida time while they're here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Deborah. And one final announcement from Anthony Trainer. Again, thank you very much, Colleen. Uh, my name is Anthony, and I'm the owner of Tropical American Timber. We're importers of sustainable hardwoods, and we make custom tables about two blocks from here. You can almost see the shop. Uh, a week from today, we're having a ribbon cutting ceremony with the Chamber of Commerce of Gainesville, and just wanted to cordially invite everyone, and looking forward to seeing you there. It's Tuesday, the 15th of August at 5 p.m., and I think it's gonna be an awesome time. So, thank you very much. Thank you for that invitation. And now, our president, Linda Reinhardt. Well, hello, everybody. Um, a couple of quick announcements before we get started. Uh, one final reminder, RLI is this weekend, this Saturday. The Vibrant Club Seminar is the 26th of August. I believe the registration for RLI is closed but obviously uh, it is still open for the 26th if anybody is able to attend that. Um, 
And with that, I'll move right into our speaker today because I know everybody's very excited about that. Um, it does give me great pleasure to introduce uh, Coach Mary Wise. She's been the head coach of the Gator volleyball season for 32 seasons, Gator volleyball team for 32 seasons, starting season number 33 in just a few weeks. And I've had the privilege of working with her for the last 25 of those years. So it's great to have her here at Rotary today. Um, we always ask for our speakers' bios and so that we can talk about them. But if I read her bio, we'd be here and she wouldn't get to speak because it's about four pages long. But I do want to highlight that she has 1,026 career victories to her name with 945 of those victories here at the University of Florida. She's a trailblazer. Oh, yes, please. Yeah, that's all this. <laughs> yeah. She's a trailblazer in women's, women's collegiate volleyball. She is the only female Division I head coach to exceed 1,000 victories. She is the only Division I female head coach in NCAA history to coach in multiple Final Fours. And she is the only female Division I head coach to coach in a national championship match. Again, just, those are just a few bullet points off of her pages and pages of accomplishments. So please give a warm welcome for Coach Mary Wise. Thank you, Gators. How's that echo going? <laughs> Doing okay? My man Tom will fix it, I promise. The voice of Gator Volleyball. I trust, in Tom I trust. So um, thank you for allowing me to be here because any opportunity that I can give thanks to the woman who brought me here, Amory Rogers, I will take advantage of it. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So if you haven't heard the story, this was a couple years ago, and I'm going to go ahead and make that the theme of um, this morning's talk is a couple years ago when it got started. Uh, Amory had an opportunity to hire, there were, t as I remember, there were three applicants that were being interviewed. Two were established male coaches, um, a bit older than me, and um, she went with the young one. And it worked out pretty well. But the piece is she took a chance. She took a chance and provided the support system that allowed us to be successful. And as you can imagine, why haven't we left? Because why would you leave Florida? Why would you leave Gainesville? And so um, I know in this profession, and it's becoming more and more rare to be able to stay at the same school for 33 years. But I've been so blessed to be able to do that, so I thought I would share with you kind of a step back in time and um, to describe what it was like when we first got here and then what it looks like today. Little did I know that the athletics director of Santa Fe I happened to be, in Chandler Stubbins, one of my first recruits. Chanda came here to play volleyball, ended up being one of the few over all these years to play more than one. This is Jan Hall. This was our dining center. Right there at gate 15 of the football stadium is where the athletes ate. No kidding. This is where all the athletes ate in that small room. But why was this unique? And why, did we, why was it such an easy answer for me to say yes? And if you ask Anne Marie, she'll tell you the story that I did say yes to her offer before I asked her the salary. I didn't want to appear that anxious, but I was that anxious. I wanted so badly to get this job. The women athletes got to eat here too. That was not the case, around, not in the SEC, not around the country, that all the athletes, now it might not have been in comparison, this is today. 
This is the Heaven of Center. And it, it looks even better in person. This is where all of the athletes eat. They did in 91, that we do now. This is part of the football uh, training center. And it is gorgeous. It and allows for the athletes to eat all three meals. Some schools only get a training table, only a dinner meal. We get all three, our athletes, all three meals are there and they have, the, the chefs do a terrific job. And did I mention that the lead chef was female? I'll go ahead and put that out there. There's the outside of the Heavener Center. To the left of that, that is a picture I took this summer leaving the office. And my office looks over there. To the left is a swimming pool. I'm going to go ahead and give credit where credit's due. When this was being planned and impl implemented, the indoor training fa facility connects to it. The outdoor football training facility connects to it. But it was Dan Mullen who said that he felt it was important that his football players ate, hung out, interacted. There's a lounge area as well with the other athletes. He felt it was important that his football players were hanging around NCAA champions and record holders and future Olympians. And thus, we all benefit just a little bit different from Jan Ha, you think? Um, so this was the Office of Student Life, you see? This too was under the football stadium and connected to Jan Hall. This is what was our academic center. And they had, um, again, Florida, because of Amory Rogers, was hired on before I got there, thankfully, um, and created opportunities for the women athletes before other schools were doing it. But all of the women athletes had the same access to academic advisors that uh, the male athletes had. It wasn't the most attractive facilities, not like today. Yeah, the Hawkins Center. It is gorgeous. It's right on campus. So in between classes, the first floor has a lounge area, Gatorade station. Oh, don't think we don't show this to the recruits as well. Uh, and they have the second floor, all the academic advisors. E next to each of their rooms is a conference room. The third floor is the study hall area, quiet study hall areas. They actually went around the academic advisors and looked at different buildings around the country and stole from them, because that's what we do in athletics. You steal from people who are doing it really well. And then you raise the money, and the Hawkins Center and the training table, those are the places that we show maybe one and two on our campus visits. And this is an outside view from it. This is just for the athletes. And so when the recruits are visiting, the parents go, wait, that's just for the athletes, just for the athletes. So, so the other day, I thought, I need a picture of what, what was that in-between stage. Between Yon Hall and before we got here, we were in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, where all the students in that college would be sitting out in a, in a lobby area, and we would kind of walk around them. I always felt guilty going straight to our academic advisor. But her office was in a closet, literally was in a closet. It looks a little different today. OK, how many of you have ever been in Florida gym? Oh, don't date yourselves. <laughs> I'm not going to. So Florida gym, um, home of health and human performance um, major on campus, is actually where we played some volleyball matches back in the day. We played in the O'Connell Center, but we also, because there was a time, Linda, you might not know this, but there was a time where volleyball and other we had to wait till the other outside events were scheduled and then we could play in the O'Connell Center so we played some matches in Florida gym and I just might add the last match we did beat Texas in last match ever played there so you think the exact tech arena looks a little different yeah absolutely um, the floor is a Terraflex flooring that's different here's one of the things that caught my attention see before I was at Florida, I was in the assistant coach at Kentucky, which meant we played here every year, which meant I would go into the O'Connell Center and I would see this beautiful facility. They had their own floor. Volleyball in the early 90s had the, its own wood floor. No other school in the country had that done. I'm sure that was due to Anne Marie as well. 
And so, and Linda can attest to it, when, when the volleyball match was over during that crossover in November of basketball, they take our floor up, put the basketball down, they played on Saturday, they take basketball out, put vo volleyball down, we play on Sunday. How about that for a commitment? Yeah, the exact tech arena um, looks a little bit different, but just a tad, okay. Now tell me, don't date yourselves. Do you remember what the original O'Connell Center looked like? An air inflated facility that had live plants growing inside in the different areas. The humidity, I'm telling you, my skin looked great. But what it did, and, and Amory, I don't know if you remember this, but it was we could not keep the humidity out of the office. And the, the papers would all curl up, and I actually sent Amory. Um, through office mail, uh, an example of our curling papers. And the next day, she created a humidifier, see? That, or dehumidifier. That is what Amory would do. But that picture is taken from, I think it was before I got here, so like late 80s, early, um, early 90s of the original O'Connell Center. And this is why I was jealous. Kentucky, we were playing in this non-air-conditioned Memorial Coliseum, and then you come here, and you see what they get to recruit to. So, yeah, it looks a little bit different. It did then, um, and then the major um, advancements that were made when um, we changed over from the to the Exact Tech Arena. It's a beautiful facility to play. This was this is an upgrade from the original practice court where Chanda would have practiced. We were um, in a side gym. This is the practice court that's there now in the renovation. They kept it and allows us for to host tournaments and all, but we practice my first um, spring when I, when I took the job, our practice time was at six in the morning and the players would set up the nets in this area, this practice court of the, um, of the O'Connell Center and none of the courts were regulation, the three courts across and you had to turn the courts. And I just thought, hey, it's still better than Kentucky. But Amory Rogers working um, diligently was able to give us, pave the way so that sometimes we had practiced here, but sometimes we couldn't get in there. We had to practice at Florida gym. But years later, the Lemuran practice facility. This gym is, uh, that's a picture of the team stretching after practice. Three courts, and we are the only team to use that. Not intramurals, not another team, not basketball, volleyball. Those nets, they stay up 365 days a year. You know how to allow your players to get better? Access. They have access to come in and practice. They have a way to get in there. They have code to the, lock, to the gyms. They can go in at night, and I'm going to tell you, our starting setter, you, if you go by that facility and you see the lights on, it's probably our All-American setter getting reps in on a Saturday night. She's that type of player. Yeah, the Lemuran, just a little bit different um, in terms of the upgrade. So another thing that made me jealous of Florida when we were looking at this, Florida had the Sunshine Network. Anybody remember the Sunshine Network? Yeah, that's a few years ago. Florida had volleyball matches televised on the Sunshine Network, and not just one or two. The SEC was proud because at that time, women's volleyball got four matches televised, four. We had more than four here at Florida. It was somebody paying attention to women's athletics. She's sitting right here. That's why this happened. The Sunshine Network put us ahead. What it, it, it did, and it still remains true, television. To be relevant in any sport, you have to have TV. And why Florida got, why we had a jump start on everybody is because of the Sunshine Network. Last year, we played in front of almost 10,000 fans at Wisconsin. It was uh, um, now that we're on the SEC network, which is part of ESPN, ESPN televised it. We're playing in Madison, Wisconsin. They moved their match from their field house where they normally play into the Kohl Center where basketball plays. They sold it out. It was standing room only. It was nuts. I think counting my family, there were maybe 18 Gator fans there. And the rest were Wisconsin screaming, red and white um, wearing fans. And oh, by the way, we won in five. Yeah, and it got really quiet afterwards. What hasn't changed is there is no greater feeling than winning on the road. 
um, and making a, a opponents quiet. But, but how volleyball has been elevated around the country, in po large part, is the SEC network, is the commitment by our conference office with ESPN to get more matches on TV. And with the voice of, of volleyball, you know, Tom was here in the very beginning doing radio before anybody else was doing radio. Now he does TV, and if, uh, but be it the linear network or the SEC network, but we're on. And this year we're on ESPN more than ever. Okay, how we travel. This, this will bring it back. So this is the piece that just got me when I was at Kentucky, and we were flying Delta through Atlanta, which we've all done, right? It has gotten better. So in the olden days, when I first got here, they had this plane called the Captain Jack. And in recruiting, here's how I would tell the stories. We would play at Georgia on a Sunday. Now, it helped that we beat Georgia quickly. The match was at 2. Our players were in, back on campus by 6 o'clock. Think about that. Match ends. They shower. We roll off to the plane. This is how we traveled. And because we traveled this way, we, met, we missed less class time. It was such a wonderful feature. <clears throat> until they stopped making the parts for Captain Jack. And probably a good idea that we didn't fly it anymore. So yeah, we were there at, in Gainesville at, with ASA back in the day, but not now. Now, this is how we fly, fly to the conference matches um, that for our SEC matches, we get to fly charter. We'll still bus to the, you know, to, when we play at Florida State in September and Georgia and South Carolina in Auburn, but any of those schools beyond that, this is how the Gators are traveling. I think I might tell that to a recruiter too. Absolutely. Yeah, just a little bit different. Up plane, jets. And Shannon, we can probably remember a few stories. There is one trip to Texas when I was eight months pregnant. I'd like to forget. Okay, Shannon, you are so lucky I didn't know that you were here because I could have pulled one out. Yeah, so when we started, these were the uniforms worn by Gator volleyball players. And they've, they too have evolved over the year. Now you'll see players in leggings. What hasn't changed is that the players will go to the floor. And you always hear about basketball, what a big deal it is when they go to the floor for a loose ball. We do it in every rally. No one makes a big deal of it. Just saying. Um, but the athletes are now bigger, stronger, more physical, playing higher above the net. The, the dimensions of the net haven't changed, just our athletes have. They're that um, athletic now. And by the way, fun fact for you, more girls play volleyball than any other team sport in the United States. How about that? So the south end zone was where we would lift weights. That too. You wouldn't see that for all women athletes. But this is where football worked out. This is where we worked out. And that's gone through a few renovations. You want something renovated, hire a new football coach kind of renovated a few lately, if you know what I mean. But it's been good for us. Now football has its own facility, as I showed you early on. And this is for the, all the other sports. We don't have to wait till after football. Just a little difference. OK, true story. This is um, Mark, me, and a two-year-old Matt Wise in 1991. This is the same little dude that when Anne-Marie called to offer me the job, this is well before cell phones. He's taking a bath. I grabbed him, put a towel around him, threw him on the couch. It's Amory Rogers on the phone. I'm talking to Amory. I got this long cord. Okay, some of you know what you remember. You got a cord, and I'm walking around checking on him because I put in the, the tape, the VCR tape. It kept him. Um, he's babysitting. I don't remember where Mark was at the time where I'm getting like the most important phone call of my entire career, the job offer. Matt didn't have a diaper at the moment, and I might have paid for that, but I got the job. So <laughs> that's how it started in 1991, and then this is this past summer. Yeah, he, that Matt, the guy on the right, um, he is married to Katie and Friends with, uh, um, with two grandkids and young Mitchell, who was born at North Florida. Um, he was the one I was pregnant with when we were on the Captain Jack flying to Texas, and the plane light went like this, and, that. and yeah, I remember that clearly. Um, yeah, and so that's the, uh, the Wise family. Just a few changes. I don't know why my hair gets lighter in the old age. Okay, the biggest difference, and this is what I wanted when the opportunity to speak to you all 
arise, I want, I jumped at it. The, perhaps the biggest difference is name, image, and likeness. That when we first took this job, if you had told me that players could earn monies for their name, image, or like, I would believe that people went on probation for this, and now we advocate for it. Now it is a big piece in our recruiting. It's a big piece to existing, to staying relevant, is the monies that are available to athletes to earn. So Florida, we have Florida Victorious, which is the collective, and they are putting their efforts exactly where it needs to go, and that is to football. They're going to get football the opportunity to recruit some of the best athletes because of Florida Victorious. What we're not there yet, I think we will get there, but not today. What we're not there yet is those monies going to the women athletes. So how can you help? You all are the lifeblood as a... Um, as a sister to a Rotarian and a daughter of a Rotarian, I know you all are the wheels that make the, the community work. If there was an opportunity, and we're not talking the big dollars, if you would, because my feeling is one is more than none, and some of our athletes get none, but if you had a business, or maybe you know of a business, or maybe you work in an area that has a business and thought, you know what, to get an athlete, I'm gonna put a plug in for a volleyball player, to just promote your business with a, whether it's, and, and for women athletes, it's social media. Our, women, our volleyball players have a bigger social media presence than football. Isn't that crazy? Than most of the football players. Our players are more active on social media, which means more eyes to your business. We have, and oh, I hope this pans out, we've had, we're in discussions with the Florida Department of Citrus, and if this goes, this will be one of the coolest things. So it turns out people don't drink orange, young people don't drink orange juice. Who knew? So orange juice is a dying brand. But if our players, if you all see social media campaign about orange juice, you heard it here first. We're going to make this happen. But this is how our players and their reach, the most popular team sport for girls. Our camps this summer will have had over almost 3,000 campers come through. Nuts, wasn't it, Linda? But it's so popular, and who's popular? It's our players. And so this is how NIL can work, is if they could promote your business, maybe a grand opening, and you ask them to be there. Again, this isn't the mega dollars, but, but any is more than none, and, and none is what it's like. So now they're selling merch. Yeah, could you imagine back in the day, Anne-Marie, that our players can make money off of replica jerseys? And so it is true that at camp when they were signing their autograph and they had their QR code out there, I didn't say anything. Um, how the rules work is I can help connect them, I just can't make the deals. So if those little girls were coming up to them and asking for their signed autograph and they wanted to purchase, if they're going to buy something anyway, let, them, let it go back, a, a part of it to go back to the players. Here's my feeling. Women athletes, Florida made it so unique. We had it better, we always had it better than most female athletes around the country. And it is true that male athletes probably got paid, maybe not legally, and not here, I'm not saying that. But now, now it's all legal. Now it's all above board. Now is our chance. Now is our chance to have this available for the athletes. So that QR code is up there. If you felt so inclined, you thought, well, that was something that I might have an interest, I don't know, maybe not today, but maybe tomorrow or some point you thought, yeah, I could see that this, this isn't such a bad idea where I could get my business in front and connected. That QR code will get you to the director of NIL strategies for the sports other than football and men's and women's basketball. There have been, um, I, like one of our players, Brooks Running Shoes, reached out to her unsolicited. And she ignored it because she thought it was a scam. They are asking her to post just two in their grid. You know what the grid is? That's Instagram grid for those of you. I've had to learn this too. Um, is that just by promoting it because young, the consumer, tomorrow's consumers are the young females today. Young females today are in social media. You want to make your company known or, your, or if it, it's, 
It, and it could be anything. It's through name, image, and likeness. So is it a good time to be a female athlete? Absolutely. Was it good to be a female athlete when Anne Marie called and Matt was in a towel on the couch? Absolutely. It was then and it is now. But I, I jumped at the chance to be able to be in front of you and say, things have changed, and mainly for the better. What hasn't ch changed is Florida's commitment to women at, women's athletics to have a broad-based program to be successful. When Anne Marie was here, it was the women athletes that were the flag bearers for the success. And then this guy, Spurrier, had a little bit of success, and then Donovan had a little bit of success, and now it's all over. And the reason that dining center and everything else, we talk about it in recruiting. You want to be great, be around greatness that winners amongst winners, what it's like to be in that dining hall or the academic center or in the weight room next to an NCAA record holder or a future first round draft choice or an Olympian. It is great to be a Gator. I think I've heard that before. So I will, at this point, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them for you. Yes, sir. Oh, sorry. Thank you. You're a great, uh, you're a great spokesperson for the Gators, and thank you, Anne Marie, very much. Um, you had mentioned part when we were talking about money. You had mentioned the word part. Um, what happens, let's say, thousand dollars? So if you do, if you contribute to the collective, the Florida Victorious that those monies would be distributed through the collective. But if you wanted to reach out directly to, it could be a women's basketball player, it could be a volleyball player or an athlete, you work with Ben and that money, and you would determine. Now, the athletes now have to be independent contractors. They have to fill out W-9 forms. Even some really interesting um, uh, things that they have to learn to be a part of. But that's where, in in part, taxes get taken out, but the rest of it would go directly to them. So the W-9 comes from? The athletes. They to, have to, to the, okay. yes, because they are considered independent contractors in this world. Crazy, right? Thank you. Yes. Yeah, Jeff. Oh, thank you very much. Back at her as a fellow PACE supporter. I'm not a big NIL fan. Let me put this caveat in. Um, what happens when your star center gets the letter from Auburn saying, why don't you enter the transfer portal and I think we've got $100,000 for you. Well, um, okay, first of all, by the rules, by the rules, it is not supposed to be used leverage in recruiting. So how does that work? How, how can you, so what it can do is, I, can, I can't say to this high school player, and by the way, just a little while ago, we got another commitment. So I can't say to her, if you come to Florida, you're going to get this much money. But what I can say is the current players are receiving this. That's why we're working so hard with the Florida Department of Citrus, if we can make this a team deal and say each of the players are making these kind of monies. A portal, that's a whole, invite me back, we'll come back, that's a whole other subject. But it's not supposed to be used at, as an inducement in recruiting. So what you have to do is, is set up your current players to show your future recruits. NCAA can't quite have that figured out, do they? Yeah, we need some work there. Yes, sir. Uh, Anne-Marie, first of all, thank you for coming again. You've been here several times. I uh, have, and, uh, a man dear, near and dear to my heart. Brent Williams brought me here a few times too. It is always a pleasure to have you. Um, my question uh, is this, we heard back that back in the 90s that you and other coaches created sort of a culture of support for each other uh, and went around and did things for other teams like football team would help with the basketball team and so on and so forth. Is that really, can you elaborate on that? and? Um, does it still continue today? That's a great question. And I'll give credit where it's due, Steve Spurrier. When we first came in, it was Jerry Spurrier. Before we had a strength coach for volleyball, it was Jerry Spurrier who worked our team out. And 
And Steve, Steve just wants, is a ball coach. He'll talk to anybody who can talk ball. And he loved, he loved the women's sports, tennis, all of them. And, and that's where it started. When it starts from the top, but it has, it, that is the, it has continued throughout all these years. I, I can think back, there was a time where a new coach came in and quickly kind of tried to work his sport or, uh, um, around another one. And Jeremy and Amory, you know, that's not how we do it here. We, we will support one another. And you can do that when you're not taking from one part of the pie to give to another. You're not feeding off of each other. And so it is a de definitely a collectiveness of, of a group effort. We're all in all the sports other than um, football and men's basketball. We are in discussion as coaches. How are you handling the NIL? What are you doing? How is this working? So that has remained. Thank you, Steve Spurrier. I, I appreciate that you're here. Question about it. Um, does volleyball actually have a new organization that backs up? Yes, we have a, a coaches association, a very vibrant, active coaches association. No, no, no. Oh, a booster club. We do. So the Gator Attack Club, we started in 1991 from, and we used to have the Lady Gator boosters, and, they, and then they kind of merged. And so each of the sports have had their own. But here's, here's our, you would think, just go to the booster club, right, Mary? Yeah. Well, guess what? The volleyball boosters are also the softball boosters and the gymnastics boosters and the basketball boosters. And when I spoke to Gator Boosters, um, when we met, I said, if, if they had the kind of monies to just give to the collective, Gator Boosters have probably tapped into them already. The, our Gator Tech Club are, met, are such wonderful people, but they're pretty well spread thin. But we can grow, we can take more. Sure. Um, Mark also says that uh, he's smarter than you. Yeah, well, look who's here and who's not, right? <laughs> he can call a timeout in the middle of a possession in basketball. How hard is that? If you have ever heard Mark and I talk together in our little spiel. Yes, sir. Thank you for a great presentation. I'm known here to just have a couple of questions. One is um, what happened if the law of not using uh, image and likeness is being mis misused. What is the punishment by NCAA? And then two, I came from a tall tribe called Dinka. If you know my nude bowl, uh, most ladies are 7'7". Seven, seven. Uh, so do you recruit internationally? And then yes. finally. Yes, will. <laughs> Let's talk. Uh, finally is, um, how does your team look like in terms of diversity, and how is the season looking like? Oh, so great I'm going to this. First of all, yes, the NCAA is tracking this, and although there hasn't been any, I would say, major public um, investigations, we've been told that they are trying to get a handle on the uh, in inducements, the illegal inducements on the NIL. Two, yes, we've recruited internationally, and as a matter of fact, Chanda can tell you that we got we started this program with success because of the international athletes. In terms of this year's team, uh, this group that I just left this morning, we go back for the second practice, um, has one of the best freshman classes. Now, that's a good news. They're uber talented. We have an all-American setter. That's like a, having an all-American quarterback. You want to be great in that position. And we have, I think the analogy I will use for the libero is an awesome offensive line but she's just one person and Ellie's about this big. So I gotta work on that analogy. But the point is the first two contacts, we're gonna be really good at. That third contact in terms of killing the ball, the big point scorer, that's gonna take some time. And somebody scheduled the heck out of this, um, yeah, one of the toughest pre-conference schedules in the country. I don't know who that was, but I gotta talk to whoever that was. So good, Linda. All right. Before you sit down, but Before you sit down, I'm going to give you a quick gesture of appreciation. Uh, thank you for being here today. And in honor of you being here, we're going to make a donation to the Bread of the Mighty Food Bank in your name. Thank you. 
All right. Um, again, it's always great to have uh, wonderful people like Mary come and speak to us. Um, I did want to let you guys know uh, we don't have the, the details yet, but we are working on putting together a fun and fellowship to go support um, one of the volleyball matches, hopefully the, seventh, the, the game on September 17th against w Wisconsin, so we can be more than those 18 people that she had at that first at that first match. Uh, so we'll be sending out an email just um, gauging uh, interest so that we know how many tickets to try to get. Um, and we'll, we'll keep you guys posted on that activity. Um, with that said, our quote of, oh, our speaker next week is going to be Brian Joes from the Forming Arts Center. So he'll be talking about his upcoming season. I know we always enjoy hearing from him. And then the quote of the day, there are no secrets to success. It's the result of preparation, hard work, and learning from failure. And that's Colin Powell. Uh, then final piece of business, the reading safari Raffle number is 649. 649. Anybody? Anybody? No? No? All right, thank you guys.